as we know that our brother was a Christian, a Catholic Christian, and so as a symbol of his Because in, in baptism he received the sign of the cross, of the of the cross, may he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. But also on his day of baptism, he put on Christ, which is a symbol of purity. And so, in the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed as well with his glory. Amen. And we begin this Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we, we meet today to bid farewell to our brother, to our son, that the Lord may receive him into his kingdom. But we also are left with the task of consoling and comforting one another during this difficult time. And as we know, as a Christian, you belong to two families, the family of blood, which is your immediate family and friends, but also you belong to the family of faith, which are all the Christians that we are always united with. And so we come together as these two families to bid farewell to our brother and our son. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, and therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord.
prayers rise up to you, O Lord, and may the soul of Seabonga Africa, your servant, be welcomed into, into eternal joy, for as you were pleased to create him in your own image and adopt him as your own, so command we pray that he may have a share in your inheritance. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought and affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them, and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In their time of visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about us as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faith shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. This is the word of the Lord. Though I walk through the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside, his rest, beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. Response. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. He guides me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and staff that give me courage. Response. Though I walk in the valley. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Response. O 
only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Yes. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Are you not aware that we who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into death? Through baptism into his death, we were buried with him, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. If we have been united with him through likeness to his death, so shall we be through a like resurrection. This we know, our old self was crucified with him, so that the sinful body might be destroyed and we might be slaves to sin no longer. A man who is dead has been freed from sin. If we have died with Christ, we believe that we are also to live with him. We know that Christ, once raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, said the Lord. He who believes in me will not die forever. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in a tomb for four days. The village was not far from Jerusalem, just under two miles. And many Jewish people had come out to console Martha and Mary over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him while Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I am sure that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Your brother will rise again, Jesus assured her. I know he will rise again, Martha replied, in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he should die, will come to life. And whoever is alive and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. Come to believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We may be seated.
the souls of the just are in the hand of God. The writer of today's first reading it begins by shocking us, by telling us that the souls of the just are in the hands of God and no torment shall harm them. The soul of our brother today is in the hand of God. The soul of our brother today is at peace. The soul of our brother today is free from pain. When you look for a job, there's a long list of requirements and competencies and required experience and the works. Then it will go through a very long process from office to office. Some people have even, have even given up finding a job because of these many requirements and the connections needed. Well, again, being in Mzanzi, you even have to pay money to get a job. But today God is offering us a job to be CEO in his hands. And there's only one requirement, which is to be just. God gives us a job today. And only one requirement, it is to be just. Because, God, because our God is a very simple God. He's a loving God. And he makes it easy for us to come to him. Being just, what does this mean? Being just means that we have to be a good example by our lives. To our children and in our families. We have seen how the world and the country is mourning and is in pain because of the passing of our brother. Without a doubt, I'll say our brother was just. But what about you and me who are left here? Are we just? What about you and I? What about our lives? Are we living a life that is just? A life that God requires of us to live? There's a certain lady who once said to me, um, Mfundis, you know, God takes only the good people. Why is that so? And in response, I said to the lady, be good and God will call you. <laughs> God requires us to be just in order to be worthy to be CEO in his hands. We are called to be just in order that we may attain God's peace and be in his hands. Where we'll be free from every pain. Where we will be, we'll be free from every sickness. You know, there are many things that God could have added in his list of requirements. You know, well, he could have said, um, I need a minimum of uh, 20 years of church attendance. Um, I need uh, extensive knowledge of scripture. Well, I would have failed if he said that. But and he could have said, he doesn't want sinners. He, want, he wants the holier than thou to be in his hands. But God, because of his love for us, does not want us to be in pain. Hence, his requirements are very simple. We must just be just to be in the hands of God. And when we are just, nothing will torment us. When we are just, we'll be able to accept God's will in our lives. And when we are just, we'll be able to be ready to meet our God. And again, even though we find ourselves lacking in many ways, if we are just, we are in God's hands. But many a times as people, we like to play God's HR manager. And although God is clear that it's, he only wants the minimum from us to be in his hands, and well, we feel that God requires little, or maybe God is joking, and then we, we add our own requirements, and it, it becomes a burden to us. And also we add these requirements in the lives of other people, and it becomes a burden to them. And today, I plead to you that let us not be a burden to other people. Like I said yesterday, to other people, let us be pillars of strength and not pillars of stress. People are burdened enough, so let us not add the burden in their lives. Today, to the family, don't be a burden on one another, but be pillars of strength to one another. Like I said to the children, to mama, try and feel what she feels. Try and be in her shoes. And try and be supportive of her. 
today the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. You know, we, we've, we've become so familiar with the psalm that we even miss the rich truth, truths in the psalm. Yes, this psalm brings consolation. You know, to us, we know the psalm, but David knew the shepherd. As he was a shepherd himself, he knew that the shepherd provides. He knew that the, shepherds, the shepherd protects. You and I know the psalm, but David knew the shepherd. But today we are called, you and I, to know the shepherd, and not just know the psalm, but to know the shepherd. It is in knowing the shepherd that we will lack nothing. And again, in this psalm, we see that there's an element of friendship. David knew that God can provide anything and everything for him. That's why he had a friendship with God. We also are called today to reflect on our friendship with God. We are called today to reflect on our standing with God. How is my friendship with God as I live every day? How is my friendship with my brothers and sisters as I live today? And I'd like to say, let us have this friendship, this friendship with each other, which will help us to console each other, especially in this difficult time. The second element in this psalm we find that we belong to God. Our brother has been called by God because he belongs to God. Our brother is with God because he belongs to God. There's one businessman who was very rich and he was looking for his long lost son. So this other time he's walking in town and he sees this beggar. Well, his first inclination was to ignore the beggar. But he saw something from this beggar. And this beggar was his son. So the son as he was begging, no mayin, it was I am, no mayin. So the father saw him and was like, no, 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 no. You can't be begging for such minimum. You are my son and everything belongs to you. You and I, my brothers and sisters, are God's children and everything of God belongs to us. We belong to God, hence he calls us. He lets us live in this life to be an example to others. Like I said yesterday, our brother wrote a book, but not by pen, but by his life. We should take from the life of our brother and make our lives better. Our brother is called by God because he belongs to God. He does, not do, he does not belong to this world. He does not belong to any one of us, but he belongs to God. And again, in the psalm we find restoration. The shepherd always protects. Our brother might have been sick, and God saw that he was sick, and he restored him and called him to himself. He is in the hand of God, because in the hand of God there is no sickness. In the hand of God, there's no illness. In the hand of God, there's no pain. That should be our prayer today, that in every pain that we feel, in every sickness that we feel, we may call on God so that God may restore us. And again, in the psalm, we find that there's reassurance that if we walk with God, we will not lack anything. And we should allow God to be God in our lives. And how do we do this? Well, it's, it's simple, really, it's simple. It's simple as A, B, C. It's A, to admit that we are sinners and we cannot save ourselves. B, to believe that Jesus died for us and rose again. And C, to confess that Jesus is Lord. We are presented today with a very dramatic gospel. We too, like Martha, we, 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 we ask ourselves the question that where was God when our brother died? We even ask now, where is God as we mourn today? And we will continue to ask ourselves when we have to share a meal and then we have to minus one plate because Sia is no more. But God was there. 
And God is still there. And God will continue to be there. He's the God of her past, the God of the present, and the God of the future. This is done to fulfill God's promise that I am going to prepare a place for you. God has prepared a place for each and every one of us, but we ought to be just in the way we live. We ought to be just in the way we handle ourselves. We ought to be just in the way we lead our lives. The passing of Sia, though painful, but also it brings assurance and hope to us that we too want God one day will meet our maker. Like I said, death is painful because it comes when we least expect it. And again, one might say, oh, well, Sia has achieved a lot. Um, um, all the information is gone. Everything is gone. I mean, God also wants the cream. One lady once said to me, um, the Catholic Church abuses our children. They take these handsome young men to become priests. And I said to her, well, God wants the beautiful things as well. <laughs> I said, God wants the beautiful, beautiful things as well. The beauty that we saw in Sia's life, God saw it. And God also wants the beautiful. And in the situation that we find ourselves today, with the riots and the, and the coronavirus, we too are like Lazarus in the world. We need healing. God heard of Lazarus' sickness, but well, he took time and never went. It was, it was after four days that he went. This shows us that God's timing is always perfect. That God's timing is not our timing. We might plan and do all, but we must always remember that God has a better plan and God's timing is better than our timing. To the family, I dedicate three songs to you. When you have time, please listen to them. The first one is by Kirk Franklin, I Need You to Survive. The second one, by the same man, My World Needs You. And the third one, by Desmond Pringle, I am praying for you. We bid you farewell, Sia. We pray that God may receive your soul and forgive you the sins that you committed because of human frailty. We are happy for you because you are now in God's hands and no pain shall torment you. Amen. Now let us in faith call upon the God Almighty Father who raised Christ his Son from the dead as we pray for the salvation of all the living and all the dead. That God may establish the Christian people in faith and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. That he may rescue the entire world from all evils of war. Let us pray to the Lord. That he may be pleased to show himself a father to our brothers and sisters who lack work, food, and housing. Let us pray to the Lord. That he may be pleased to admit forever in the company of the saints his deceased servant Siabonga Africa, who once through baptism received the seed of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. 
May the prayer of those who cry to you benefit the souls of your servants, O Lord. Free them, we pray, from all their sins and make them sharers in your redemption. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Mercifully receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering we trustingly present for the soul of your servant, Seabonga Africa, that, this, that through this sacrifice which you ordained as the one true remedy for all, you may grant him everlasting salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Holy Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, his spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Butikahali our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. And listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children that are scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Siabonga, Africa, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly bodies after the pattern of his own glorious body. And to all our departed brothers and sisters, to and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, may you give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. A 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Hello. Um, we will kindly request that only Catholics can receive the Holy Communion. That is um, the church's law. Thank you.
May we please observe a moment of silence. Let us pray. Renewed by the nourishment of this sacred gift, we pray, O Lord, that our brother, Siabonga Africa, freed from the bonds of death, may rejoice to have a share in the resurrection of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. We can continue with the program of the day. Good morning. There. Okay. I'm reading the obituary of my brother, Siabonga Kennedy, Africa, who was born on the 30th of September. Thank you. I will be reading the obituary of Siabonga Kennedy, Africa, who was born on the 30th of September, 1985 and he passed on the 19th of July, 2021. On Monday, the 19th of July, 2021, Siabonga Africa passed away at the age of 35. Sia was born on September 30th, 1985, in Peter Maritzburg, to Patricia Nogokanya Africa. He grew up in Peter Maritzburg, where he attended St. Charles College in his primary years, then matriculated from Christian Brothers College on the East Rand in Johannesburg, in 2003. Sia's tertiary education career began at the University of Pretoria in 2003, where he received his B. Admin degree in international relations. He relocated to the Western Cape in 2007 to obtain his honor degree, honors degree in journalism. His scholarly journey, journey led him to the United States in 2009, where he attended the University of Indiana and obtained a master's degree in new media. Upon his return to South Africa in 2011, Sia's career in the media industry began and evolved tremendously over the years. He held multiple roles in the sector, including becoming a digital strategist for the continent's largest publication platform, 24.com, in, in 2012, and a digital media strategist for the South African Broadcasting Corporation, SABC, in 2015 where Sia spearheaded the development of the Mandela Presidency widget. During these early years of his career, Sia continuously diversified his skills in and out of his office roles. In 2012, he co-founded the Johannesburg chapter of Hacks Hackers, and since then had been community coordinator for the local group. In 2014, as a fellow for Code for Africa, he facilitated journalism workshops and was behind the production of data-driven projects. In 2017, Siabonga became a program officer for the Media Development Investment Fund, where he engaged with clients, developing them for the South African Media Innovation Program. 
At the time of his passing, Sia was a senior program manager for Code for Africa for the Code for Africa Impact Investment Team. Let me just lift this mask. Um, for the Code for Africa Impact Investment Team, where he led a media innovation portfolio, which extended his professional reach across the African content, continent. Throughout his career, Sia went above and beyond the scope of his roles to achieve excellence in his field, not for personal accolades, but purely out of his desire to make the world a better place. Sia Bonga was a passionate man. He was always proud of his Star Wars fandom, as you all know, being a geek and his love for comic books and superheroes. His humor was one of a kind. He was witty. And, men and, had menacingly, and he was menacingly sarcastic. He was healthy and enjoyed boxing, running, and had recently began golfing. He was explorative with a number of hobbies, including cooking and bread making. Sia was an avid reader with an extensive collection of books. He dreamed of having a personal library in his home one day. He was excited by travel and had the opportunity to visit Buenos Aires and Istanbul in 2014 to take part in international hacks hackers gatherings. In 2018, Siabonga gifted himself a trip to Thailand for his 33rd birthday. Siabonga is survived by his mother, Patricia, his stepfather, Dennis, and his three younger siblings, Toby, myself, and my younger sister, Noxie, and our younger brother, Mtowo. His family is enormously proud of all that he has accomplished at his young age. May his soul rest in eternal peace. I'm going to try and help to facilitate the program um, and begin by saying I know some of you have joined the program yesterday in memorial um, and for some reason or the other, in fact for reasons related to load shedding, the program had to come to an abrupt halt uh, and to announce on behalf of the family that um, there will be a recorded uh, uh, program of uh, videos of those people that were meant to talk uh, last night. And that program will be made available in the course of either today or in the coming days. But you will still then be able to go through that program uh, at the leisure of your home uh, and still be able to celebrate the life uh, 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 Now, uh, at this point in time, I think I would uh, ask Unoxi uh, 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 to come and say a few words uh, about uh, the brother. Morning, everyone. Um, I'm Sia's youngest sister. There's my older sister, and I'm Togo. And I'm the one who was on the receiving end of a wave of calls, messages, memories, and stories from friends. And it's been so difficult this week trying to navigate processing the loss of our dear brother but still also trying to be there for all the many people who wanted to join in 
that remembrance of, of who he was. So in that, it made me realize that every single person who reached out, every single one who shared a comment on social media, they knew Sia from a perspective that was different from our own. An interesting example of that is the story shared by Anne-Marie yesterday night about the Berde Bay newspaper. From our perspective, <laughs> Sia once came home with red overalls and the newspaper was stamped across his shoulder. And we said to him, what's, what's Perdebe? You know, what's, what's Perdebe? What is that? And he said, it's Perdebe. I'm part of the newspaper at the University of Pretoria. So we had so many different stories of all the people he knew from a perspective that they would, they would never even know. <laughs> but the point is that he was so many things to so many different people. He was a colleague, maybe an industry acquaintance, a classmate, a friend. But to us, he was our brother, our brother Sia. Growing up, Sia was the sweetest little boy. He was gentle, he was kind, he was tender. His, um, our, our late cousin Lungi used to tease him for being a crybaby. <laughs> but we all knew, we all knew, oh my apologies, I hope you all heard most of that. We all knew Sia to just be soft-natured. His many years at boarding school developed the kind of good behavior that most wouldn't associate with a young boy. Sia was well-mannered. He never caused any trouble. Unlike the rest of my siblings, <laughs> we were heavily influenced by my older sister who was the definition of a menacing child. We would sometimes take our time getting to chores because we knew that Sia in his sainthood, he would do all the chores for us, <laughs> even the dishes. So he would just hang back and wait until he stepped in. <laughs> Coming into his own as a young man, Sia was very aware of himself, of his likes, his dislikes, who he was as a person. I still remember when he first realized that he was a geek, <laughs> as we keep saying. He adopted the title so proudly he was unashamed of loving to read, of loving comic books, of loving fictional movies, sci-fi, the works. And speaking for his love of mo movies, if you knew Sia, you knew that if there was a blockbuster film in town, he was the first one with tickets. <laughs> we absolutely loved our sibling dates with Sia. Our big brother would spoil us. He would make the booking, he'd buy the tickets, he'd get the popcorn, and if the movie was within his favorite franchise, obviously Star Wars or Marvel, he would watch that movie over and over again with different friends from different circles. <laughs> so you'd find he would have gone with us on maybe the Thursday night, then the next night he's booked with another circle of friends, then the day after that he's watching the same movie again. No one can love movies more than that. In our family, Sia was a dictionary in human form. He loved explaining things, and he often got carried away. <laughs> he would expand on a topic in extreme depth to a point where you couldn't remember what sparked the discussion in the first place. He would go on and on. <laughs> Sia genuinely loved knowledge. He was wealthy in it, and he was generous with it. Beyond the many qualifications he collected over the years, in 2020, myself and Sia bonded over the return to student life. After so many years, we had both registered at WITS for different master's programs. I had registered for my first master's degree, but this would have been Sia's second master's degree. We would have been graduating together next year. Our brother was remarkable. He was a hard worker, a thinker, a problem solver. He took pride in being a gentleman and exuding the essence of what seems to be so difficult to find in many South African men these days. Because he had sisters, he valued women. He always vowed to be a man who treated them right. We had a siblings group on WhatsApp. We often chatted about relationships, work, and of course, jokes, memes, silly clips from the internet. <laughs> Every now and then, however, over a number of years in the past, during difficult times, Sia questioned the value of life 
especially in the cruel world that we live in and in the midst of facing a number of personal challenges. Depression was one of them, and those who knew Siap personally knew of his battle with alcoholism during his early adulthood. But Sia was so resilient. He faced his issues head on. He did what it took to overcome, and he eventually triumphed. Sia was so proud of his sobriety. In 2020, he reached the five-year milestone. And this year, he would have been six years sober. Sia continued on a daily basis to improve himself in every way. He was emotionally aware of himself. He was comfortable with that sensitivity he had from his very young age. That soft Sia, as a little boy, became a man who was sensitive in nature, and he didn't mind it. He was always open with his emotions. He believed in a principle based on a two-way street, that in every scenario, every person was responsible for keeping their side of the street clean. He always worked on himself, and as a result, he was thus the open-minded, fair, and objective man we all knew. As Brother Garabo mentioned earlier, he was just. He was just. He lived a principled life. He was honorable in all that he did, honest. And this was such a rare and precious quality for anyone to have. So as I stand here before you all today, I just think back on every moment, every memory. I think of my whole life that has existed with Sia in it. He's just always been there. He was always there. He's our brother, of course. And it's unimaginable to think that this isn't the case anymore. <laughs> While he's no longer here in this world with us, this incredibly difficult world, I know that where he is, he couldn't be happier that unyielding heavenly joy that you've searched for for so long, Sia, you have it now. You are at peace. And it brings my heart so much joy. Even though it hurts that you're gone right now, now you can rest. Sia, we miss you, bro. We miss you so much. And we love you so, so much. And we know that you loved us too. So for now, it is farewell, my brother, until we see you again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nokolo. I think in line with the theme that was relayed to us by Brother Karabo, and in line with uh, the many other uh, remembrance and contributions that have been made about the life of Usi Yasiabonga, it shows and indicates uh, that the parents have done uh, a good job in that regard. It shows and, uh, uh, and indicates that he himself uh, was a good son in that regard. And it shows and relates that he was a good brother. And indeed, from yesterday's accounts that were relayed to us, it shows that he was a good friend and a good colleague and indeed an example for all of us to follow. Uh, I would ask uh, perhaps maybe in between that if we can have a song that really re uh, shows uh, uh, this particular lively person that is there. And if not, I would ask our uh, technical people perhaps to ask us whilst we are, uh, because we are about celebrating a life I know that uh, it's about loss, uh, uh, but also at the same time, uh, all these many things that are being said, good things that are being said, they indicate that we are about celebration of a good life well lived.
so that she can uh, then render uh, a contribution from Umama, uh, who, who will then be speaking uh, to her son uh, in this regard. If we can have, if we can have, uh, you know, perhaps uh, a song, Yogum Pagamisa. Hello, I am here to present a message from my niece, Ukanyu Minangingu Koko Garcia. Kanyo is saying to my precious son, Sia, you left so suddenly. I thought we were two peas in a pod, our hearts beating to the same tune. You didn't whisper to me or give me a sign that you'll be leaving me. All along, I thought, as your mother, I'd receive premonition. If something so profound were to befall you, my son, you were a part of me all my life. Even now, I cannot believe you are gone, that I will no longer see you. 
to whom am I to turn when things are tough, when I'm confused about what is happening around me, around the world? You always availed yourself to me. You provided me with a shoulder to cry on. You were our pillar of strength, my comforter in so many ways possible. I remember when you were first born and held in my arms. I was young then. I was in my 20s, a single parent. I remember the joy I felt. I said to my God, God, you have presented me with someone special, more so as you arrived with Imbanda. Literally looking the same as Papa, my grandfather. This was something I had never seen before. I looked at you and marveled at God's precious gift to me. There was a lot I had to thank him for during that time of my life. And that is how your name came about, Siabonga. My parents had only three girls and two sisters had already had their girls at the time. So everyone was filled with joy on your arrival. I called you Mfanawam and my friends called you Fana Wake, which continued throughout our young parenthood. I promised myself there and there that I would work hard and raise you in a manner that would be pleasing to God. My life totally changed when I had you. You became my muse. I was working as a medical technologist. There and then, I said I had to, start further, to study further to give you a better life, which led me to medical school. Over time, I got married and had siblings. And you had siblings. You grew up. You achieved a lot beyond my expectations, beyond my wildest dreams. You suffered silently with depression. You were man enough to come to me and tell me about your illness. And you found assistance. You struggled a lot to adjust when you returned to South Africa after your studies at Indiana University. And you took your frustrations by taking alcohol. It was a bad season in your life, my boy. Through it all, I could see that you did not love the person you had become. And we are aware the hurt it caused me because through it all, I have never doubted your love for me. Eventually, you found AA and your life took a turn for a better life. Your determination and perseverance was astounding. Once you had set your mind to doing something, there was no turning back, my son. Through the years, you celebrated your anniversary of being sober. You did not want to worry me with what was going through your mind most of the time. You would tell me not to worry. You will manage. It was my duty to take care of you, keep you safe whilst on earth. Through it all, my son, I thank God for loving me. He presented me with you as a son to raise, which I believe I did a good job seeing all the reminiscence given by your friends, colleagues, and the public. You grew up to be a wonderful boy and a wonderful man. And I do not know if I ever said it enough for you to hear how much you made me proud, even seeing you moved on with your life's plans. You grew up and made choices and decisions that I never would have guessed. You climbed the corporate ladder within a very short space of time. At the back of, the, of my mind, there was that intuition that you were not going to be around us for a long time. It was the way you were doing things, always pushing as if you knew your time was limited 
and there was no tomorrow. You grow up to be a man with high moral integrity, my son, and determination. I want you to know that in my book, that is exactly where you fitted. You were unique, my special son, with character, with strength, and style. I feel blessed to have been your mom. I want to tell you this very moment, I was and will remain proud of you for the rest of my life. I will remember you each day that I live. You are such a good person with so much to give. It was a privilege to have known you and had you as my son. I will cherish the good times that we shared till we meet again. I love you. I miss you. And for now, goodbye. As I struggled with the heartache that came when I lost you, I pray that God will give me strength and somehow get me through. Love, Mom. Thank you very much. I think we can all, after having heard the reference, the remembrance of Mamukanyo, have the benefit of uh, the importance of honest conversations. Honest conversations which um, we can appreciate of a mother talking to a son and a mother guiding a son and the hole that has been left because of that absence. But once again, we have to rely on our own understanding, the understanding that has been brought through us, through our faith, that says we must draw our strength and comfort uh, in the Lord. At this point uh, of our program, I think we have come to uh, almost the end of the program. What we will do um, is that uh, we will um, uh, have a process of viewing of a body. Now, the viewing of the body will occur precisely because uh, Usia was COVID negative. If he was COVID positive, we would not do that, right? So because he was COVID negative, Therefore, it means it's possible for us to do that. Uh, and thereafter, uh, the program will really would have come to an end. And whilst we are then in that process of preparing the viewing of a body and the viewing itself, I will ask uh, uh, when the music in the background, that would then uh, uh, assist us as we go through uh, that particular uh, process. So, Zalkela, who 
Malume or the rest of Adala, if I may be to assist us uh, in uh, preparing uh, uh, ah, here we do. Fine. if you can play the music in the background. So remember, as we come through, we must still maintain social distancing. So uh, if we can do so, giving ourselves some space and time.
hurts me Your loving kindness towards me Your tender mercies I see Day after day Forever faithful towards me you're always providing for me. Great is your mercy towards me. Great is your grace. Help me say, help me say. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness towards me, your tender mercies I see day after day, forever faithful towards me, and you're always provided.
His loving kindness toward me. Your tender mercy. that will okay. So we are not going to go to the burial site. Right? At this point in time, uh, to come and uh, say a few words uh, on behalf uh, of the family. Thank you very Thank you very much, uh, Nzala Gengezi, Uspatela Ushelo. On behalf of the Africa and Mkulisi family, I've been asked on behalf of, the, of those families to thank you for all what you did. Just beginning when you had the news, the bad news that uh, Siabonga has departed. It has been a difficult time for the mother and the siblings because they were still waiting for more from him. And also the way it happened because it really was a surprise. But then because they are believers they took that surprise with courage. We all loved Siabong. I remember the times we spent with him, especially when he was at Indiana University. He would visit my, house, my home because at that time also I had an opportunity of being outside in the United States. So he'll spend some time with us and our family. And it, we, we treasured those days. Those were the good days. And also, we were really happy to see him grow. And also, with all what he, he, he was doing and also all what he has achieve, he achieved in life, we were saying this is, a, this is a person who's going to be the light of the Africa family. But then, God willing, that didn't happen. On behalf of the family, then we would like to thank you all, especially Father Kumalo and Brother Karabo for the good recommends we've had. And we say farewell to him. And also, as we have said, that we've, we've heard that we are not going to be going to the 
to the cemetery because there will be a private cremation later. So we'll probably get the refreshments. And then after the refreshments, we can maybe perhaps mingle with the family and then we'll say good luck and goodbye. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Kabazala. Uh, if we can have uh, just a musical item. In the meantime, um, I will then hand over to, because we have come to uh, this part of the end of this part of the program, hand over back to the priests or father to do the final commendations. Um, and they will guide us accordingly, which will also then lead uh, to So we'll do the prayers, uh, and then they will guide us accordingly in terms of the program, uh, what we do. Um, in the meantime, we have to keep on observing uh, the COVID uh, uh, regulations as it were. And then, uh, uh, as uh, Okabazele had indicated, as we also are taking our refreshments, uh, we'll also then observe the COVID regulations. I think they've been prepared accordingly. Uh, so as not to, uh, um, you know, put anyone at risk uh, that is uh, here and present. Um, and I understand uh, there's one more person that would like to view the body, to assist, uh, so that we can then uh, uh, call on... stand. Our brother is gone to his rest in the peace of Christ with faith and hope in eternal life. Let us commend him to the loving mercy 
of our Father and assist him with our prayers. He became God's son through baptism and was often fed at the table of the Lord. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of, of God's children in heaven. And with all the saints, may he inherit the promise of eternal life. Let us also pray to the Lord for ourselves, that we who mourn be reunited one day with our brother. Together we may meet Christ when he who is our life shall appear in glory. Amen. We shall proceed to the hearse.
Hello, I'm My name's Ian, and I was one of 21 uh, classmates of SIA in 2007 in Stellenbosch. And we all loved him very much, and we have very fond memories of him. And I would like to read a, a tribute to him. It was impossible to not like SIA. If you put 22 nosy, aspiring, overachieving journalists in a classroom and throw deadlines at each other for a year. Some people just aren't going to get along, but not with Sia. Because Sia 
was so likable that he was even likable when he tried not to be. And I liked Deadline Flustered Seer or Sleep Deprived Seer because it was impossible to not like Seer. And Seer was, among many things, an unashamed geek, as I'm sure we all know. And I loved how you would see him on TV talking about important things, dressed like some GQ model. But at the same time, you'd know that this man has an enormous collection of Star Wars memorabilia. And I remember one night while we were on media tour in Joburg that I convinced him that we needed to leave the guest house to have a wild night on the town. And it quickly became apparent what Sia's definition of a wild night on the town was when we found ourselves in a late night comic book shop in Melville with Sia flicking through pages of paperbacks. My favorite memories ha uh, that I have of him are all just outside the journalism department. I remember conversations on campus. I remember talking about girls. I remember Bryce at Hayes de Villiers where he lived. We once drove to Sutherland with the hope of seeing the stars at night, only to arrive there on the, the single cloudy night of the year. I remember going with, with him and a fellow classmate, Alida, after we had finished a, a late night assignment in the department to a club and dancing with our backpacks on. And then after that, we graduated and we all started to do the things that grown-ups do. And the banter that we once shared on campus was replaced with quips and comments on Facebook and texts on birthdays. We'd meet up with each other whenever we were in each other's cities, which didn't happen, happen as often as I'd like, but whenever it did, it was really good. And that's because it was impossible to not like Sia. There was always something going on in Sia's life, and it seemed even more dynamic the way I saw it from afar. One day you'd see that he was working in Joburg, the next he would be studying in America, or he'd be on TV, dressed in a crisp shirt and a tie, talking about something important. Then he'd be headhunted by some company, only to be headhunted by another one. When we last spoke, he, he told me that he was studying part-time while working. There was always something on the go. And it feels impossible to think of Sia in the past tense. And it's as if every was written in this tribute is a grammatical error, something that he and I and our classmates were trained to look out for. It's impossible to think of what happened this week as something happening to one of the class of 2007. A bunch of graduates fumbling through adulthood at more or less the same pace. And we we find ourselves at the point of making families now. We're not re we're not nearly ready to learn how to say goodbye to each other. And that's why it all feels so impossible. It feels that we're supposed to learn these lessons, to learn how to say goodbye after our class's 40th reunion, at least. And that seems like an appropriate time to look at each other knowingly as we remind ourselves to tell those close to you that you love them. We love you, Sia. We love your kind heart and we love your quick-witted mind. 
We love the energetic life that you lived and the warmth that you brought to those lucky enough to have met you. Sia Bonga, we thank you. I'm Anna Marie. Badabay at UP around 2005. I will never forget the day I met him. He joined the newspaper after me and we were having a sort of meet and greet with new members. We went around and people stood up and introduced themselves. This skinny guy with dreadlocks gets up and proclaims the myth about Zulu men to be true. That his passion for journalism and good work ethic and his famous Master of Kama Sutra's t-shirt saw him quickly make friends and become an integral part of the team. Our friendship grew on our mutual love of rugby and geeky things, especially Star Wars. He would often equate our friendship to Han Solo and Lando Calrissian, which is very flattering for me. We had long talks about life, love, and occasionally politics. He was level-headed, patient, fair, you would not hear him speak ill of someone. This is a true testament to how he was raised. He wanted only the best for his family, his friends, and his country. In a fair world, a man like Sia should have been president. He was a uniting force and brought people together. The actor Simon Pegg said that geeks are honest about things that excite them. And this sums up Sia so well. He had such a zest for life. He was adventurous and proudly chased his ambitions. And he spoke about the things that he was passionate about. From his love for his family, to geeky movies and series, gaming, reading, traveling, journalism, programming, baking bread, playing golf. One of our last conversations, he shared his excitement about his new instant pot with me. His interests were as diverse as his friends, and the various circles he moved in. He was a friend who listened, who shared your happiness and sadness with you, there to lend an ear or a hand if you needed him. Sia was honest about his own shortcomings and limitations. He took them on and he rose above. He was brave and an example to us all. To pay tribute to a guy like Sia, a friend I thought I would grow old with is truly heartbreaking. 
My deepest condolences to his family and especially his mother. He was just getting started. But he touched so many hearts in his short time. And we are all grateful for having him as part of our lives. Sia, my brother, may your force be with us always. the first time at Parabay, the student newspaper of the University of Pretoria. And it was at the Parabay camp and we spent about 45 minutes or more talking about our mothers. In all the 17 years since then we've shared many interests and passions, but it all started with our mothers. We spoke about how they both came from such humble beginnings and how they made such successes of their lives and how we felt so much pressure to live up to their expectations of us to be the best we can be, but also to never disappoint them. So the year after that, I became Parabay editor and Sia was my assistant editor in charge of the in-depth section of the newspaper. And he told me that he really wanted the standard and the quality of especially that section of a newspaper to be on the same standard as Mail and Guardian. And he really pushed his journalists to achieve that type of standard and to tackle hard issues head on. In one such case, we even had some people in our office, really high up people in society complaining about one of our articles. But he was just steadfast that it was something that needed to be reported on. In all the years... Sia has the widest smile. He gives the biggest hugs and he serves a plate of love through his incredible cooking. When you're with him, you are full in mind and heart. And if you had a slice of his homemade sourdough, which by the way was a doorstop size with trimmings, so was your stomach. He is not a man of half measures. I met him at SABC News when he became part of the digital news department. The two of us were a small team of specialists. He impressed everyone with his innovation, intelligence, insights, accomplishments and drive and could lighten any situation with his wry, sharp humor and observations. He would also give quiet, patient guidance to those who needed it too. I remember a mantra that he shared often with colleagues. Wear a tie, be on time, and be on task. We formed a deep bond of friendship that continued after he left. He became my family. We trusted, supported, and, and learned from each other. He is incredibly sensitive and private, and when he invites you into his realness, it is a true privilege and a gift. Sia is a rare human. When he engages with you, he listens not just with his ears and, and, and his mind, he listens with his heart. If you do wrong, he will happily slap you into your senses and tell you to get back up without judgment. He will be your biggest cheerleader. 
Many, many thanks to his family for this opportunity to honor a true friend and for giving us here. I am so, so grateful. And to the other speakers, friends and family who are with us here today, I give you my love. It is difficult to speak about Sia in the past tense. He will forever be in my present. May he be forever in yours. feeling a bit sad that Sia's memorial online last night didn't go as planned but I think we all also had a lot of fun memories of imagining how Sia would have handled it he would have been a bit flustered but also ran around and made sure all the tech worked and fixed everything up Sia was such a solid friend to me it's hard to believe that he's not here anymore so I'm imagining, as I sit here, that he's holding my hand and he did have beautiful hands. And I know he'd be helping me not only um, to navigate this difficult emotional terrain, but also giving me some tips on public speaking and making videos. <clears throat> um, so if I'm not looking at the camera, how I should be or anything like that, um, it's fine you know, Sia, Sia was the one who helped me with that stuff. Um, when I first met Sia at Hacks, Hackers in Joburg in 10 to 12, I have a very clear memory of walking into the room and looking around and seeing who the cool people were and who could be my friend. And my eyes obviously lit on Sia. I'm trying to remember right now the first time we met up after work because but I just can't because once Seal was in your life, he, he was just in it. And there were so many times we met up and it just seems like such a normal everyday thing. And I think it's something I um, often took for granted. Sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. Um, you know, I keep thinking of that kind of thought experiment where you imagine there's a whole lot of people in a plane and it's about to crash and there's only one parachute. And I think we would all agree that Sia would be the person who deserved that parachute. But I mean, that's a bit of a maudlin way of thinking and, and that wasn't Sia. You know, I was sharing this thought with this friend Margot um, when we were chatting the other day and she started laughing at me and she said, she said, you know, see, I wouldn't have taken that parachute. He would have given it to someone else. And Margot's big, beautiful laugh just also made me hear in my head see his big, beautiful laugh, which made me feel better for a little while. Um, you know, Sia and I had many fun adventures together, but for some reason, those aren't the memories that are in my head right now, although I'm sure they'll pop up in the weeks and months to come. What I keep thinking about is just the ordinary everyday moments we shared together. Um, you know, I often invite friends around to my parents' house, then I think house for a bride when they're away. Um, and this is despite the fact that I have never bred in my life and never intend to. So whenever um, Sia received such an invitation, he'd immediately know that he was more than just a guest. <laughs> Sorry, 
had to bring over the Star Wars apron I gave him and take up some Prime Master duties. Um, of course, the person who usually uses the bra in my house, which is my father, um, I'm not sure if he actually knows how to clean it. So it was Sia who taught me how to clean the jewel with an onion. Um, although I, I use the word taught very loosely because he introduced me to, you know, the theoretical concept of doing so, but he always took care of the practicalities himself with no complaints, that was Sia. Um, I've been, I'm sitting here at my dining room table and I've been thinking how, you know, earlier this year, Sia would come, came over quite a few times and we'd just sit and work together. And, you know, Sia and I never actually worked um, for the same company, although we're both in media, but he was such a great work companion. Um, we had both sat at this table and it wasn't like having a friend around and you distract each other. Distract each other. It was more like Sia was so focused that I'd also be focused, more focused than usual. Um, and of course, we'd, we'd break for lunch and catch up on a have a chat, catch up on each other's lives, but it was never long enough. Um, and I think Sia and I were close in so many ways besides work and our interests, but it, it was also so cool having such a close friend who was in the same industry as me. So we could share frustrations with our jobs um, or big ideas for new projects and we'd know that the other person would understand where we're coming from. Um, of course, because we both changed jobs um, more than once over the time we knew each other, like this was very useful for knowing all the different people in the South African media, South African media community. Um, and it was great for media gossip. I was actually just thinking on Wednesday um, of some media gossip that I never did get to find out from Sia because as much as we shared things with each other, he was always very professional in that breaking confidence. So there was a particular story I wanted to find out. And I said, okay, Sia, just tell me in 10 years. And, and I always thought I'd be able to find that out. And now to be honest, I'm a little bit annoyed that I can't. <laughs> um, but Sia was always so conscientious about fulfilling his obligations. So I actually have the idea that he's going to appear in a dream of mine, in one of my dreams someday soon and, and share the information with me. Um, Sia was, you know, I've been thinking, like I told myself not to cry during this video. I don't know um, how I'm managing not to, but I seem to be doing okay so far. But then I also told myself, it's okay if you do cry because Sia was someone who I was comfortable crying around. Um, he was always very supportive and um, very good at articulating his emotions himself, whether he was venting about work um, frustration or um, working through an issue in his life or just sharing his joy. Um, and I know how much I'm in term because he told me, and I really appreciate that. And I hope that Sia knows. Sia, I hope you know how much you mean to me. Okay, thanks everyone.
Yeah.